Hey guys, what's up? Today I've got two bits of exciting news to share with you. First off, I'm starting a brand new blog at newfieboard.com. This will allow me to share more information including pictures on the products that I am reviewing, some video transcript summaries, links to products, outtakes, and anything else that I can think of to post on that site. Second of all, move over Hikvision. I am starting to unbox and review brand new cameras. This one today is going to be from Unitech. I'm branching out and expanding my brand knowledge to see what else is out there. This is a 4 megapixel dome camera. It costs $80 on Amazon and it has some pretty awesome reviews. So let's take a closer look and see what we got. I looked on AliExpress for this camera, but it wasn't sold there. I also couldn't find any evidence of it being sold on the gray market. So what do we have inside? First of all, we have waterproof requirements, written in good English. When they refer to the tail cable, I think it just means the cable that comes from the camera. It's easy to understand, it had pictures included, and uh, they want to make sure that you install this so that it stays waterproof. A quick install guide to get the camera set up and installed. Right away, the first thing that it shows is the IP address and login credentials, which is probably the most important information. Inside, you also have safety information, uh, maintenance on how to clean the dome, an explanation on the wiring and the alarm hookups, how to install the camera, how the RJ45 connector works. Uh, lots of good information here, which is something that I've uh, usually end up going online to find. So it's uh, right at your fingertips right when you open up the box, which is great. Next, you have a packing list, which is great idea, so you know exactly what's included in the box, so you're not missing anything, especially if you're new to this. Uh, this looks like a thank you card and support from Unitech. Seems like they understand that this device is complicated and you might need some help getting it set up. RJ, RJ45 coupler. This looks a little bit different. In the end here, there seems to be the, the shape of the RJ45 connector. So I'm kind of interested to see how that's going to work. Three mounting screws. Star wrench, of course, to get into the camera. And this mini drill template. Looks like it, yeah, it's actually a sticker, which is kind of cool. And by, by the looks of it, there's only two holes for mounting. Not sure why there's three screws. And then, of course, we have the camera. Let's pop that open. Wrapped nicely in plastic. There's a lot of wires here, but they're all labeled. That's pretty awesome. That's good to see that everything is labeled. I'll have to play around with those uh, with those wires later, maybe in another video. The, uh, the camera feels nice and sturdy, like it's uh, made out of metal. And looks like the wire exists from the bottom <clears throat> it looks like the wire is exiting from the bottom of the camera which is a good sign here it allows for a nice clean install also there's only two screw holes in the front here so i guess what that's why there's so many reminders about making sure that it's tightly sealed so that no water gets in there and the ir lights seem a little bit small in comparison to the hikvision here and they seem to be shadowed by the foam that's around the lens. So let's, uh, we'll have a look at that a little later, see how it performs at night. So let's pop the camera open and uh, see what we have inside here. So the cover is held in place by this little piece of um, strap, strapping they have here. There are also two bags of this anti-moisture substance, one on each side of the camera, which, uh, which is nice, don't remove those. And right here you have uh, a card slot. So, uh, and I'm looking for a reset button. So I don't see a reset button, but in most cases that can be done through the software. So next to the card slot, looks like there is a battery. I reached out to the manufacturer who responded right away saying that the battery is to ensure the parameters and functions are saved successfully to the camera. So let's get this plugged into my network so that we can get it tested before we bring it outside. I'm going to be using a PoE switch here, but you could use a power adapter and plug it into a router or switch. But my uh, PoE switch provides the electricity that this camera needs. So we're just going to 
plug that in here and let's log into the camera. The quick install guide has two IP addresses that we could use. Let's try each of these using Internet Explorer. So the first IP address cannot be found. Let's give the second one a shot. Let's speed this up a little bit and it looks like we cannot find the second one either. So what do we do? On the side of your camera you'll find the MAC address. So quickly grab that. On your computer you're going to want to open up the command prompt and type in ARP dash A and that will give you a list of all of the devices on your network and their MAC address. Find the MAC address for your camera and note its IP address. So bounce back to Internet Explorer and put in that new IP address and you'll see a login screen. Click on the download to uh, install the plugin. Click run and the uh, plugin will get installed. You might need permission from your firewall or your antivirus. Once it's complete, the login page will appear again. Put in admin and the default password of 123456 and have live view selected so that when you log into your camera, you'll be presented with the live view screen. And first off, I'm going to change my password as recommended. And once that's done, click OK. Then you'll be able to bounce back to the login screen where you'll need to log back in using your new password. Once you're back in, click on Setup and then click on Network. And we are going to change the IP address so that they're more in line with the rest of the devices on my system. I don't want the IP address to change. I'll click Static and then I'll enter my new IP address. I'm also going to need to update the default gateway to that of my router and then click Save. It looks like the camera did a quick reboot, so you'll need to put in the new IP address so you can access the web user interface. I'm going to log back in again and go to Setup and Network and update the ports so that they are also in line with the rest of the cameras on the network. The instructions say to protect the exposed wires with electrical tape, so let's take care of that. It's a cold winter's day in Canada, so let's get this installed quickly. Thumbs up if you like the toque that my mom knit for me. Today the install is going to be right here on my shed. There's no access to the space under my eave from inside, so I'll need to drill a pilot hole. When doing this, I'll push up on the soffit, so when I feed the wire through it, it'll be on the inside in that space in the eave. Soffit can be a challenge to drill into with a 1 inch bit. To avoid making a mess, you might want to start with a drill and then tidy it up with some snips. Next, I used an old coat hanger bent on one end to fish the wire out from within my eave. It took about 10 minutes to find it and then a few more minutes to get it out. Here is a quick look at how the coupler works when you already have your cable terminated. I quickly terminate the CAT6 cable, connect the camera, and secure the waterproof seal on the RJ45 plug. Now that the wires are all fed inside the soffit, I'll use two of my own screws to attach the camera. Using three screws would have been more secure, but I don't want to remove and damage the soffit to install braces, so a two screw install is my only option. Loosening the screws on the side of the camera will allow you to adjust the up and down point of view. I have my laptop here on the ground so I can see exactly what area I'll be capturing. Once you're happy with the angle, secure the dome cover good and tight. And I'll give the camera a little shake here and yeah, it's, it's pretty secure. And here's a look at some daytime footage. The quality is actually awesome and I'd be happy to use these cameras uh, at other locations around my property. You can easily recognize faces and ex see exactly what I'm doing. And here's a close up of the IR lights turned on. I have my mini PTZ camera set up to see what the output looks like of these IRs from a distance. Those LEDs may be small but they sure put out a lot of light. That's pretty impressive. Not bad for an 8 hour camera in complete darkness. There are a few tracers, but you can easily see what I'm up to. I might be able to up the quality a little in my settings, which I'll share in another video when I get to that level of detail. So this camera has a ton of features that I want to experiment with in some other videos. I love the daytime footage of the 2.8mm lens. The nighttime footage is also good. The web interface has a little bit of lag, but the video seems to be instant, and that's the important part. I like the uh, layout of the web user interface and how you can access the same feature through multiple menus. 
definitely worth the $80. And in an upcoming video, I want to hook the camera up to Blue Iris so I can record footage continuously and with motion detection. So that covers my unboxing setup and review of this Unitech security camera. For more information on this product, please check out my blog at newfieboard.com. I'll put the link in the description below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see what else I'm up to, please subscribe to my channel.